Hey, this is Sarah Joy Albrecht, founder and executive director of the nonprofit Hold My Guns. You can learn more about our work and get involved at holdmyguns.org. You might hear me use the phrase liberty-based solution. I want to share with you why that is so important to our mission, not just a matter of semantics, but what that means and contrast it with a phrase that you might hear elsewhere, and that is a public health approach. Before I get into this, I want to share with you that I know that there are people in the firearms community who are doing work in the public health approach space. This is not a video to point fingers at anybody. I'm simply stating this is what we believe in why and why it is so critical to our mission. I also want to note that sometimes in community collaborations, there are other groups involved who identify with a public health approach. And we are always very careful to say, Hold My Guns mission is for gun owners, by gun owners, and we care about preserving rights just as much as we care about saving lives because we believe at the end of the day that helping to preserve rights does save lives. So we're always very careful to make that clear. We don't have control over other entities that sometimes join uh, community collaborations. And I want you to understand that when you're trying to help and you're in the suicide prevention space, that this is something, this is a challenge that we have, and this is something that um, can even be a barrier for uh, gun owners to get involved with advocacy. So I'm very much aware of this, and we always are very firm about this particular issue and make sh making sure that we um, uphold rights in our work. And that means that sometimes we have to say no to initiatives that are secretly or euphemistically um, just trying to bring on gun control measures, legislation measures, to legislative measures where we take a voluntary approach and a personal responsibility approach. So when we say that it's a liberty-based approach, what we're saying is that we trust that for whatever reason a gun owner is bringing their firearms in for storage, whether it is because they're having a crisis in the home, such as a mental health crisis, a substance abuse crisis, um, somebody suffering from postpartum depression, the gun owner themselves is, is struggling with uh, overbearing stress and they're, they're looking for a way out, a suicide crisis. Um, we trust that for whatever reason, um, some more, maybe they're going through a divorce, maybe they're going on deployment, maybe they are selling their home and they don't want someone to have unauthorized access to their firearms, that all of those reasons that people want to store firearms. They are private reasons. They are up to the gun owner and it is exercising personal responsibility to reduce suicide, uh, unauthorized access to firearms that can lead to um, negligent injuries and uh, theft of firearms and stolen firearms used in a crime. So for whatever reason the gun owner is deeming this is why we need to do this, we trust them to do that. That is an approach that underscores the value of personal liberty. We also are very careful because we know that sometimes there are initiatives that are legislative that ultimately are about undermining rights, particularly the right for due, to due process. And we believe that due process must be pre-deprivation of property. And what that means is it's not a take your firearms and we'll talk later, you'll get a chance to go see a judge at some point and maybe get your property back, maybe get your rights restored. But instead, if there is a crisis that that person has an opportunity before their rights and property are deprived to go before a judge and to say, you know, yes, I need help voluntarily or um, I'm sorry, but someone has reported me falsely and actually this person is a stalker or a vindictive ex that has, is trying to hurt me and victimize me and disarm me so that I am defenseless when they come to attack me. And so we always emphasize the importance of due process in the traditional sense, and that is before rights and property are deprived. We also believe that if a person has um, been able to work through some of their personal issues, that they should have the opportunity to have their rights restored. And so we do not think that just because someone was, for example, involuntarily committed at some point in their life, and then they've gotten help, that now for the rest of their life, even though they're a different person now, that they have survived and they have gotten help, 
that they're still not allowed or fit to have a fire. And we always have the person in mind and we want to support people in their journey to get help. So I want to say that that is really important. We also care about a liberty-based approach in that we believe that having a mindset of personal responsibility carries over into creating a community where the concept of liberty and self-governance are just like breathing air, that it's a normal thing, that we genuinely care about people, but we also respect their privacy, just like we would hope that they respect our privacy, and that instead of calling big government in to take care of every problem, that we're looking for solutions within our own community. So those are some of the reasons why I love the word liberty and why I use the liberty-based approach when I talk about our firearm storage program that is voluntary. To contrast, a public health approach is dangerous. First of all, this is a phrase that the CDC has used for a long time. And in fact, if you go to their website and you look up the public health approach to reducing violence, you'll come up with a website that they have that has all different categories um, and they list all different kinds of violence, including violence with a firearm. Now, recently, all of us just kind of went through this pandemic and we heard the phrase, according to the CDC, every single day on every single media outlet, whether it was on the radio, on the way to the grocery store or on our social media. And in fact, we even had fact checkers that every time we would say something about um, <laughs> about COVID or whatever, you would have these fact check bubbles that would pop up and censorship and things like that. They are taking a public health approach to disease prevention, and that means that they will censor people who disagree with them, and that is quite a contrast to a liberty-based approach. A public health approach means that it is not an individual's responsibility to take personal responsibility, but instead it is in the best interest of the public and whatever the mob mentality of the public tells you you need to do in order to stay healthy, that that is what you have to do. And they're very pointed on the CDC website to talk about how, even with instructions for how to do it, um, how to use your public health approach to affect policy. And we know from looking at legislation that a lot of the research done for public health approach um, is particularly around firearms um, is are used and weaponized. So health information is weaponized in order to promote a legislative agenda. And it's like, well, if these are the best practices to have distance from lethal means during a time of crisis, which a liberty-based approach can appreciate that, and that is part of why we're doing what we're doing. But a public health approach takes it a step further to say, therefore, because these are best practices, now it is public policy, in other words, law, that, for example, red flags are just a lawful outworking of the concept of distance from lethal means. So it's forced, and it is uh, enforced by the public and by law enforcement to make sure that a person is staying healthy.